right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, we're talking about my cheap fat bike and talking about how you can make yourself a cheap fat bike for the winter time. But before we get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure you hit that bell icon right next to that. That way you get notified every time I upload. That way you don't miss any of this awesome cycling content we got on this channel. So right onto the video, we are talking about my Mongoose Beast fat bike. So this bike we built up over the past winter and did a whole bunch of modifications and made this bike an awesome fat bike to ride for the winter time is essentially what we did. So this bike started off as a regular old Mongoose Beast. You could pick these bikes up probably 10 years ago at Walmart. You could pick up a single speed fat bike just like this guy here. Looked a little bit different than it does now, but they're pretty close. So this is how it started off when we bought this bike. So we bought this bike for a total of $50 on Facebook Marketplace. And it is a little bit harder to find a fat bike, of course, but you can definitely find these available for a low, low cost. So it's a pretty inexpensive fat bike to start off with. Now this bike, it does have a completely steel frame and fork and wheels as well. So it is a heavy bike starting off. This bike started off as a 50 pound bike. Yeah, 50 pounds on a bike. That is a ridiculous weight. Even for a fat bike, that's a ridiculous weight. So 50 pound bike, it had all steel components on there. It had steel cranks, steel chain ring, steel seat posts, steel handlebars, steel stem, all of it, steel. And it, along with that, ridiculously heavy tires when we first bought it. So it came with all the super heavy stuff that was just made to be robust is what it's meant to be. So it came with all that that's just not gonna work. Riding a 50 pound fat bike through the snow, not exactly the most fun thing in the world. Even with low tire pressure, it just sinks because it's so heavy. So what we did, we went ahead and tackled the process of trying to drop as much weight as we could off of this bike. So today we're gonna talk about what we did to lose some weight on this fat bike and gain some fun on it as well. So the fat bike, the big thing that's for is going to be for the winter time, what I mainly use this for, winter time and the snow. Because the big fat tires on here, which are a 26 by four, you can pretty much float on the snow when you drop these tires down to about two or three PSI. Yep, two or two or three PSI, you can just float on the top of the snow. It's pretty crazy. However, even though it's made for the winter, I use this bike pretty much all year, just my get around the local area bike. And it's really just because of simplicity. It's a single speed fat bike that can still pump tires up to about 20 PSI, which is what, it's, what these tires say the max are. And it does okay. It's not, the, it's not the fastest thing. However, it's reliable. So even though it's a fat bike that I built specifically for the winter, it's a fun bike all year round to ride on. So let's talk about some of the things we did on this bike. So first thing we did was, of course, we needed some way to carry some water. These bikes do not come with any mounting points from the factory. There is nothing here. This frame is completely smooth, no mounting points. So what we did, we went ahead and drilled up the frame on here, put in two places to mount water bottle cages, one down here on the down tube and one up here on the seat post tube. That way we can carry two separate water bottles with us when we're out on a ride. So that was number one, because we needed some way to carry water on this heavy, heavy bike that we can get out there and explore. Winter time is cold, it's dry. You need some water while you're out there. So that was the number one thing we did was get some water bottle cages on this bike so we can actually carry some water. Next thing we did, we went ahead and moved on to the wheels and tires. So with the wheels, we went ahead and drilled out. So I believe they were inch and a quarter holes that we drilled out all on the inside of the wheels. That way we could try and lose some weight off these wheels. Obviously when you have a four inch wide wheel made of steel, it's gonna be heavy, right? It's gonna be pretty heavy. So we went ahead and drilled out holes all the way around. If I remember right, it came out to like 32 holes for each wheel is what we drilled out. And then we ran some duct tape on the inside to kind of give it that pop of color through there. And it's just white. So it doesn't really, it's not a huge pop of color, but it is something. So we went ahead and did that just to try and lose some weight on the bike from there. After that, we went ahead and moved on to the tires and the tubes on this bike. So the tires that originally came on this bike were ridiculously heavy. I have videos about all this. And I'm gonna have a link to the playlist so you guys can check out all the videos about this fat bike so you can see exactly what all we did to this. So the tires we went ahead and changed those out, went to a Chow Yang tire. Never heard of them before, but they were one of the cheapest tires I could buy used online to throw on this bike to see if it make a big difference. So we went ahead and swapped over to these tires and with the tubes, instead of running a 26 by four tube, we went ahead and ran a 26 by 2.8. So a, about a three quarter inch narrower tube than what was in there originally. And that's because the original tubes in this were so large that they weighed a ton when you took them out. So we went to a narrower tube, try and drop some weight, and that definitely made a difference going to these tires and those tubes. Once we had the wheels and tires down, 
pretty much the next process from there was trying to drop weight off of the separate components on the bike. So like I said, this bike was all steel from the factory. So steel cranks, steel chain rings, steel seat posts, steel handlebars, steel stem, everything was steel. So everything there weighed a ton of weight versus getting an aluminum counterpart. So first thing we did, we went ahead and swapped out our crank set here. So we went ahead and bought an inexpensive square taper crank set here, which is an inexpensive 32 tooth chain ring on here. So we got that for both sides. And then of course we went with some just basic flat pedals. Something that looks very similar to a chest, to a race face chester, just a little bit wider. So when I'm wearing my winter boots, they fit perfectly on those pedals from there. When we did this, we also re-geared the back of the bike as well. So this bike came with like a 16 or an 18 inch gear on the back of the bike. We went ahead and changed out for a 22 tooth gear that we could have some super low gearing on this bike so we can pedal around in the snow and not have a single problem. Like I said, this bike is single speed, so we only have one choice of gear. We want to make it as low as we could. That way we'd be comfortable riding it in the snow. Again, once we had the gearing done, we kept on working with the individual components. We went ahead and changed our seat post to an inexpensive aluminum seat post. Got that all changed out. And then our most recent thing we did, which was kind of on the weight loss journey, but also kind of just for fun, was we did a conversion on the stem. So we converted this inch and an eighth threaded headset and we went ahead and put an adapter to make it an inch and an eighth threadless headset. That way we could run a threadless stem on here and run these bamboo handlebars from Pachier. These are the Gump 760s. So this was kind of outside of the original plan. I was originally going to keep the handlebars that came on there, but we had a chance to try out these handlebars and throw them on this bike and I love those handlebars and I love how they look and feel on this bike. So we went ahead and did that from there and again, dropped even more weight off of this bike. And ultimately with the weight loss journey on this bike, we started a little over 50 pounds and ultimately it's a little under 35 pounds as it sits. That's a pretty solid weight loss. 15 pounds off a bike is quite a bit. Now, I'm not gonna tell you this is a light bike by any means. It's still a steel fat bike. And I can tell you no fat bike is going to be light per se. They're all gonna weigh out. They're all gonna weigh something. So it's not light, but it's lighter than it was to begin with and much more enjoyable to even ride around. 50 pounds, you can feel that between your legs as you're riding and it was it was kind of a handful to ride with. Once you drop down to 35, you're in, the, you're in the ballpark of a lot of bikes that are out there. And so it feels a little bit more natural and comfortable while you're riding it and not like it's a big old tank underneath you. So what's coming next for this bike? So it's winter time again, it's gonna be coming time where we're gonna be able to ride this. And I wanna get out more rides this year. Last year we were doing a lot of the building process of getting this bike how we want it to be. And at this point, it's pretty solid how it is. The one thing I do want to improve on this bike is going to be the braking on this bike. So this bike, because it is a single speed, it also has a coaster brake on it. As you can tell, there's no brake here, no brake there, no brakes on the front. So it has a coaster brake hub on the back. Pretty much got to pedal backwards in order to actually stop. It works, it works perfectly fine. It's a little bit interesting when you actually take it off road into the snow and the slippery stuff because you kind of have to pedal backwards and you tend to get out of control a little bit. So that's one thing I do want to improve on this bike and I'm kind of looking at different options out there and how I can add a brake to this bike to be able to use kind of a handbrake. Even just one on the front wheel would make a little bit of a difference in being able to slow and stop this bike easier. So ultimately in my cheap fat bike, it's still gonna, I would still consider this the cheapest fat bike out there. Ultimately with this bike, the bike originally, I think you could buy for like 250 bucks off of Walmart when they were brand new. I paid 50 bucks for this on Marketplace. And ultimately, if you don't count the handlebars on this bike, we have under $200, probably under $150 in this whole bike. So it's a very affordable upgrade on this bike. Ultimately, right now, other than the handlebars, we are still less than this bike would have cost originally. And ultimately, we're at a far better quality bike and lighter bike than it was when you could have bought this originally off the shelf. Even if you were able to stick with the original handlebars, you would have been perfectly fine. Even with those original handlebars, we were at 35 pounds. So you would be perfectly fine not running a fancy bamboo set of handlebars, but that is an awesome upgrade to have on there. But for being a nice, cheap, entry-level fat bike for anybody to go ride, this is gonna be a great bike for you. So hopefully you guys were able to learn something about my fat bike, and hopefully you're looking forward to riding it some. Should start snowing any day here in Reno, so hopefully once it starts snowing, we'll get the fat bike out and start doing some riding. If you did enjoy the video, give it a big thumbs up. Appreciate the support. Any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Love talking to you guys. Love answering any questions you guys have. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.